Good morning. Today's topic is about a day's waiting. And it is written by Ernst Hemingway. Let's quickly take a, a short background about the writer. Okay. So uh, uh, Ernst Hemingway, uh, Hemingway uh, is born in 1899 and died in 1961. And he was, uh, or many literally scholars regarding the American author, uh, he was one of the most influential writers of the 20th century. He was born in Auk and uh, he began writing stories as a teenager. So he started very early writing stories. He was a teenager when he started to write stories. After, after he graduated from high school, he became a newspaper reporter and then he served as an ambulance driver for the Red Cross. And that was in Italy during the World War. So later he moved to Paris where he lived among other American writers and artists. He adventurous, uh, or his adventurous lifestyle influenced his fiction, avoiding the often elaborate writing styles of 19th century novelists. He also used a more plain spoken approaches, especially for dialogues. Yet his characters, brief, straightforward words, often carry layers of meanings. Finally, A Day's Wait offers a prime example of Hemingway's ability to craft dialogues. So as we can see here, he is very famous in writing dialogues and uh, uh, proving on that, the, the, the text that we're going to read now or the story that we're going to read now is called A Day's Wait. Okay, let's see what is the story about. Well, in, in, a, in a very summary, or in, in short, uh, the story is about a young boy uh, who is nine years old. And this boy has been you know, very sick and ill. Uh, let me first explain the two characters. There are two characters in the story. It's the nine years old boy and the father. It hasn't really mentioned the name of the father clearly because every time you, uh, like throughout the story, when you read, you will find out that it is always it always says uh, the, the 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 father the father the father, and the narrator here is the father himself. So let's uh, explain briefly what is uh, going on in this story. As you can see here at the beginning of the story, it shows that the boy is ill and I have got a headache. So he mentions here that he has got he is he has a, a headache. So his father is a very caring person. He tells him, uh, you have to go to bed and, and rest. But the boy still doesn't want to do so because he still, he is not aware of the, 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 that he is really ill and he needs to rest. Later on in the story, the father insists on the boy, to, to the boy to, to go to bed and have some rest. And then the father uh, calls the doctor and starts to talk to the doctor about the, the boy's uh, situation. And the conversation between the father and the, the doctor goes privately away from the boy so that uh, the boy wouldn't feel that it's a big issue or it's something very big. So the doctor says that he is ill and his temperature is too high and he needs to rest. And it shows here that he has a fever, okay? Later on, uh, there is a conversation going between the father and the boy, and the nine years old boy. Uh, let me mention the name of the boy. The nine years old boy's name is Scott. Okay, Scott uh, also uh, uh, thinks that he is very ill and that he is about to die. Here comes a very important part in the story, which is the conflict between the boy and the father. Uh, sorry, the, the conflict between the boy himself like there are two kinds of conflict, inner conflict and outer conflict. The inner conflict is the boy having this conflict between himself, thinking that he is about to die because of something he has heard, he had heard before. But uh, later on, this conflict shows, is aware or appears between the father and the boy that they are not able to communicate together. So let's say again that there is two types of conflict in the story. 
the inner conflict is the boy having a small conflict between himself that he thinks that he's about to die because his temperature is too high and he's so worried and scared and he doesn't want to really show that clearly. And then there is another kind of conflict, which is the conflict between the father and the boy. There is like a misconnection between them, because as you can see, the, the, the boy thinks that the father is not very uh, frank with him and he doesn't want to tell him that he is very sick. Okay, there is the, the, the most important part of the whole story, which is the misunderstanding that the boy fell in when he thought that he is about to die because he had a really high temperature. Let's look here together at uh, page number 51, where it says, okay, here is a very small part. It says what? About how long will it be before I die? So the boy here says, even the boy, while he's talking, he's very sure that he's about to die and he is thinking that his father is not, uh, doesn't want to say so. So he said, the father answers, You're, you aren't going to die. What's the matter with you? Oh, yes, I am. I heard him say 102. So the boy heard the doctor saying that his temperature is 102. People don't die with a fever of 102. And that's what the father said. That's a silly way to talk. Then the boy explains why he thinks that he is about to die. I know they do. At school in France, the boys told me, you can't live with 44 degrees. I have bought 102. Okay, so what's really a big deal here? Why the boy still thinks that he's about to die? Like, does he think that a 102 degrees is something that a person or a human cannot live with? Later on, the father explains, and this is the most important part, he had been waiting to die all day, even since nine o'clock in the morning. And then he says, you poor Scotch. I said, poor old Scotch. It's like miles and kilometers, you aren't going to die. The difference, the, the, uh, that's a different thermometer. What on that thermometer, 37 is normal. On this kind, it's 98. Are you sure? So here it shows that the boy is, 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 is confused and he didn't know that there are two kinds of temperatures, uh, thermometers you can, you can measure the temperature with. So he thought that the, temp the, the, the thermometer his father is using is the same one that the boys were talking about. And that's why he was in a conflict or with it, he was in an inner conflict that he thought that he is about to die. And uh, this is in short, the whole story. At the end, the boy rests uh, in his room and everything goes uh, all fine. Let's quickly look at the, um, uh, let's look at the vocabularies that are mentioned in this uh, text or in this story, starting with the first one is detached, detached. And this is an adjective and it means indifferent and unaffected by feeling uh, or usual interests. So it means again, indifferent and unaffected, uh, unaffected by feelings or unusual uh, or say usual interests not unusual, usual interests. Okay, then we have another one, it's called prescribed. What is the meaning of prescribed? This is an adjective, it means to given as medication. So when the doctor gives you a, a prescription or a prescribed something for you, this is given as a medic medication. Third one is varnished. And what is the meaning of varnished? Is to cover in a hard or polished coating of some kind. So, and this is a verb, burnished. Burnished is a verb. Okay, uh, later then we have another, uh, another uh, word which is called evidently. Evidently, this is an adverb and it means in a matter that is really un understandable. So it means when something is uh, really understandable that you can read, uh, this is called evidently. Finally, last but not least is slight, and it means somewhat relaxed, not energetic, someone who is really exhausted and tired, and uh, this is an adjective. Uh, and this is the whole story comes to an end, and uh, uh, thank you so much.